start recording button here. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and uh, I know the admissions people just wanted to take a minute just to say a couple words before we get started. So, uh, so if somebody wants to jump in there and, and uh, take, take over for a minute. Hey everybody, um, on behalf of the admissions team, we wanted to say welcome to the event and welcome Dylan. Uh, thank you for taking some time out and helping us out. Um, we are excited for you guys joining us here in the big blue button. Um, and I know our team is excited to have you guys here. Yes, um, if you guys have already enrolled with us, uh, be sure to like, comment, and let us know what you think about the event. Um, we have various social media, so you can visit us on Facebook, on Instagram. We have a Discord platform um, that'll keep you all connected to get more information on future events just like this. I'll post that all in the comments after this as well. Okay, yes. thank you guys. Yeah, definitely, I, I recognize some names over here, Daniel, Cheyenne. Um, for those of you who might not already be enrolled or have an interest in game or visual effects, um, you know, you can use, if you don't feel comfortable putting your, your information in the public chat, you can implement the, uh, the private chat and reach out to either Nina, Anthony, or myself, and we'd be happy to provide any additional information um, via private chat that uh, might be helpful. All right, thank you guys. So I'm just gonna make a real brief introduction. I'm gonna let uh, Dylan talk. Um, so uh, Dylan, thank you for showing up tonight. Dylan is a graduate from the day school. She came through in 2011. Um, doesn't seem like it's all that long ago, but it seems like it's a long time ago too, doesn't it? It does actually. <laughs> Dylan came through the program and uh, I was at the school at the time, but I know she's gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, I've got a couple little Dylan stories a little bit later that I'll share with you guys. And she said she's got something to say about me, too. So <laughs> looking forward to hearing that. Um, but Dylan is currently in Auckland, New Zealand, where they did all of the uh, Lord of the Rings stuff. Um, so uh, she is teaching at a school down there called, what is it, the Auckland University of Technology? You're a tutor or an instructor? Yeah, I teach in two schools. Occasional I teach on uh, Auckland University of uh, Technology, and I'm teaching full time on Juby Colleges. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, again, Dylan, thank you for showing up. I'm going to give you the floor. I'm going to make you the presenter uh, so that you can share with us your screen. And I know you've got a little something to show everybody. Yep, let's actually get it started. Yeah, so I'm going to. Share there. So it should pop in a couple of seconds. There we go. So welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm really excited, actually, to be here, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so this is actually have been kind of like a journey for me. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit of how the journey became from coming into my head and say, I'm going to be doing this to actually make it happen. Because it's one thing saying, I'm going to do this. and then actually make it happen. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a quick look of who I am. So that way you guys can actually have a little idea of where I come from and how my journey has been uh, to start it. So let's see. Let's just go. So of course, this is a map. <laughs> so I'm not going to give too much information about the ge uh, geography there because I'm a geography teacher. But uh, let me tell you from I was born in San Diego, California. So um, but I didn't grow up there. I actually ended up growing here on the Mexican side of a small town called Nogales. It's a small border town. Um, it does not have too much going on. <laughs> so, um, and the majority of stuff that they do is uh, just the industry's factory. Um, so it's kind of like not exactly more digital environment friendly as you can think about it. Um, so after that, I actually was thinking, um, one of the stuff that I have been doing so far in the industry has been uh, whoop, wrong screen. <laughs> I just jumped my mouse to another one, to another screen. There you go. So stuff that I have done on the industry. This is a couple of examples of the work that I have been working on the industry uh, for the last eight years because I'm still working as a freelance, even though I don't work as a studio and still work in, in the school as a teacher, I do a lot of freelance work too as well. So, but this is a little bit of like idea of one of the stuff that I think in my IMDB credits, it goes up to 40 something credits. 
Um, so for TV shows and some films, they went directly to TV. And I have, as you guys see on the promotion that has been actually given from the school, I was nominated to the Emmys twice um, as the outstanding special visual effects in supporting role for the work that I have done on The Walking Dead as a compositor. Um, so that was actually quite interesting because the first nomination happened two years after I graduated. Um, so it was a big surprise for me and of course really excited because a lot of people spend years sometimes working in the industry. And um, yeah, this was actually like kind of like shocking for me. Um, so let me start about where this person from this small town came to go into this kind of like um, fancy events and have this all inform uh, all this opportunity to work in the industry. So I'm going to talk about my journey and my story begins here. So I always have strong believer that when you actually get into this career, you have some uh, inspiration, something inspired you or motivate you to get into, say, I want to do video games, I want to do VFX or animation or any like 3D modeling. Um, so for me, it was this film, Toy Story. I was eight years at the time. <laughs> so um, I got the VHS as a gift. I don't remember if it was a Christmas or uh, my birthday, but it was a gift. And I was looking at the film and I was just mesmerized by all these characters moving and the animation. And I didn't know at the time, of course, I'm like just as a kid, just looking at the TV and just, wow, this is so cool. <laughs> so I was actually looking at it and like, remember pulling my mom and say, mom, what is that? And I pointed to the TV and my mom was like, it's cartoons. And like Tommy Jerry and um, Scooby Doo and Looney Tunes, and I'm like, no, no, this is different. I don't know what it is, but I want to do that when I grow up. So imagine a eight year telling the mom saying that you as a mom will say, ah, yes, yeah, sure, honey. Tomorrow you will want to be a, do a firefighter, or you want to be an astronaut, or you know, kids change mind. But funny thing is, that my mom now is saying like, well, you actually stick with that idea, and yet if I stick. Uh, up to this day, I'm going to stick for a long time too as well because I'm still really passionate about it. Two years later, I also watched this film, <laughs> Starship Troopers. Not exactly the best storytelling probably, um, but the visual effects, all the creature animations that they had there and the compositing, I was like, wow, this is, where is this planet? I don't want to go there. There's so much huge insects there. And of course, once I start actually like doing my research, I figure out it was everything by visual effects. And I'm like, wow, I do want to do that too as well. So these two films were um, my influence as a, a, a little kid to decide to get into this career. And this is me in 2004. I was a high school student. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the journey from this point. To this point when I got the first nomination as, uh, as an Emmy uh, for an Emmy and a lot of people think that from this point from 2004 to 2014 my journey was like this kind of like a straight line I didn't have any problems everything was happy because I actually know what I want to do so but in reality um, one of the things that people don't realize that in order to get to a point um, you know your goal, you know kind of like what you want to do, but you don't know how you're gonna get there. Um, so for me, my journey was more like this. <laughs> I did have some ups and downs, um, of course, balancing personal life, um, trying to get also getting my career going, uh, learning new stuff, being challenging because also my first language, it was not English at the time. So I was actually like, how I'm gonna do this in learning English at the same time. So, and of course I come from uh, Mexico, my culture, it gets, it was a little bit stigmatized at the time that a woman wants to do VFX and animation. It was like more stereotype for men. And when I decided to actually go that, I was <laughs> kind of like a big argument with some of my relatives there because they thought like, ah, oh, yeah, that's actually useless and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't care. I love to do this. I want to do this. So it was a little bit uh, mess <laughs> everywhere. So, but, what I actually started saying is like, okay, let me start building my skills. On 2004, I was in the high, on high school. And on the picture that you see here, I was actually doing some theater uh, with puppeteers. 
So I was designing some um, plays and I was doing puppetry training and I was showing people to how to do puppets for um, environmental causes. And I said, okay, let me see what else I can do. So I started doing some research. Internet was not too uh, available at the time. So I went to the library, I started asking people, I started moving around pretty much to actually see. And one of my friends talked me about a software, one of my older friends, a software that just came out, it was actually really revolutionary. And it's like, you need to try this thing called Photoshop. And I'm like, Photoshop? <laughs> okay, so he actually gave me a copy. And I started playing around with it. I started actually like what uh, I ended up going to a cafe internet, um, paying a little bit of money to actually see some tutorials and get some information. And I started playing around with it. At the time, I did have a phone with camera. It was the first time that I did have a phone with camera. And I started taking advantage of that. And I started telling my friends, just do crazy poses, <laughs> some crazy stuff, like just lay down here and kind of like I start posing them and uh, taking pictures. And I started doing this kind of like, um, play around with the software, just learning, breaking it, um, just having fun at the same time when I was learning. And one of the things that I see, and it affects actually my whole media group of friends, it was that I was enjoying it so much that they started becoming curious too as well of what I was doing. And <laughs> they actually take some revenge <laughs> for all the stuff that I was actually doing. And it is funny because now that I see, of course, I see all this stuff and it's like, it's just good, funny memories. And but I see how the fun was for us, like just being, enjoying what you are doing. So in this case, um, we actually, I started doing some work. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, I was working with uh, developing some puppetry uh, plays and uh, performance for in conjunction with the University of Arizona and some students that were actually doing this and we were helping them. And I actually started taking acting. So because I say, okay, I want to do animation. What else I can do? And I realized that some people were advising to do acting. Um, because you have to act when you animate your characters. And I started doing that. And I also started doing some uh, broadcasting. I was a broadcaster once a week uh, on my local um, radio. And I was actually just having a program for students, literally like things that are going with the students. Let's actually talk about the new trends, blah, 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 you know, movies, films, and all that stuff. Um, and I was actually a really good student. I was a straight A student. Um, I was really dedicated to my uh, to my studies. I was doing computer technician. I was actually learning how to code and how to do um, set up a whole network and all the stuff, um, technical IT stuff. And I did actually um, start getting a little bit stress. And this stress have actually like start building up because I, well, of course I was doing so many things at the same time. And it started building up, it's still building up until the point that I actually break. And I think at this point, it was at the very first time that I had to actually take strong decisions. And that's when I said, at this point it's gonna be all or nothing. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened. So, on around, I was 17 years at the time, and I ended up, because all the stress they had built it up, I ended up developing a uh, guillain uh, barre syndrome. So guillain barre syndrome is a really rare condition that technically your body goes hardwired and it starts attacking your nervous system. So causes, they're still studying it, they don't know what the, it causes, they have some ideas, no one knows exactly what going on with the syndrome yet. It's so rare that people don't usually tend, it's nothing common. So what happened is that one of the times I was actually under a lot of stress on the school and I sit down on the floor because I started feeling really weak and I was not able to get up. So one of the things is that I'm actually pointing out with this is that as artists, sometimes we put too much pressure on ourselves and sometimes it's not healthy for us. So this was my first encounter with stress. And definitely after two weeks of not walking and after I started kind of like walk again, I realized I need to actually build some skills to cope with stress. And definitely this is one of the things when you're learning to cope with stress is gonna be a really valuable skill um, in any career, not just on digital design, in any career. 
um, because the stress is pretty much everywhere in the corner. And that's why I bring this up too as well. So by that time I was close to also graduate. So I did my graduation in 2006 as an IT person uh, on my high school. In Mexico, you usually graduate from high school with already kind of like your um, career path. And I was actually asking where to go next. I think pretty much every high schooler um, has this in your head, probably even a couple months before you even graduate. And start obviously is kind of like a daunting thing to think. It's the future, you don't know where you're going to go. And of course, um, life too as well. Personal stuff uh, can actually get on the way. So for me, I was like, okay, I need to practice my English. <laughs> I'm still thinking about how to build this career. I didn't have loose focus on what I want to do. So, okay, I need to still speak English. So I want to actually start working in a store so I can actually get um, my English practice. And I worked in the store in two uh, for two years and then 2008, the US financial crisis came to the door. And of course, you guys haven't actually seen how the world is going upside down. <laughs> it was kind of similar to that point too as well. Um, I think I was a little bit more lighter, but either way. So the 2008 fi financial crisis ended up hitting home and um, the money that I was doing for the store, we used to have commissions and extra bonus and all the stuff. Um, I was saving it in order to go to the school. So I was paying my tuition with any extra money that I get for a community college that I went in Tucson, Arizona. And when this happens, it didn't hit us dramatically in 2008. What it ended up hitting is in 2010. In 2010, pretty much, all the bonuses and extra money, it was gone. They would have removed it, they were, everything was gone. So I didn't have money to pay, continue paying for my studies over there. So this is what I actually start doing more research. I'm like, yeah, I'm always gonna be stuck in a store and working full time and studying part time or should I just go all into it? So one of the days I came home, I went into Facebook. <laughs> I was actually quite new on Facebook and I started playing it just because this game. So it's quite an old game. I don't know. I think it's still around, but I was really into this game at the time. And before I actually go and went and activate the game, I see on the corner kind of like all these announcements and things because they were actually noticed that what I was actually looking, of course, uh, Facebook. And they actually pop up an announcement from Dave's school. And this is how I ended up finding the school. Um, so I started looking at the website. I started actually checking all the stuff that they do. And I started actually like, oh, this is actually pretty good. I have seen other schools. It's not that I have gone with the first uh, uh, thing that I actually find on the internet, but I have actually been doing my research and I have been doing uh, looking at other schools in New York and California. And I think even in Georgia, I have a look at some schools um, in Arizona too as well. So I've been actually been looking around and when I start looking at the website from the school, I start seeing all these amazing things and I see some of the student um, work that they actually been displaying on the page. And I'm like, oh, this actually looks really cool. And I'm like, but it looks really good to be true because they are, we're actually saying we just teach, you, you just come and do one year. And the majority of the schools at the time that I was looking at, they were actually doing three years. <laughs> so it was quite um, interesting to see that. So uh, what I ended up deciding is grabbing some of the leftover of my savings and I got some plane tickets and I ended up deciding to go and see the school by myself because I was like, what if this is a scam? It looks so good. Um, so I went and actually looked at the school and I was like, man, the school is actually pretty good when we arrive and we get into the back lot and you see this whole building, like the sound stage. And I was like, man, this, I started getting excited. I'm like, this is so cool. And they actually put us into the green screen. <laughs> this is a picture from one of the class that I actually um, helped to do a teaching assistant. But um, I entered to this big, huge room with a huge green screen and the motion capture. And some students were doing some motion capture at the time when we were doing the tour. And I, I think at that point it was when I make my mind, I want to come to the school. I don't know what it will take, but I want to come to the school. This is so amazing and I want to do this. So of course, um, that means when I get, oh, I got back home. Oh, go back one. 
when I got back home, I packed everything. <laughs> I it went I went through a lengthy process to actually uh, get my student loan accepted, but it was worth it. Um, so when the student loan got accepted, it was pretty much two weeks before the courses started. So I had to actually pack everything really in a rush and just take my whole things and move to Orlando without knowing. It was the first time that I was going to move to a different city. I was going to be even far away from home, more than three hours away from home. <laughs> Um, so it was quite actually like a, a journey to as well at the same time getting this trip. Um, I didn't know anyone in Orlando. I was like completely, I didn't have family. Uh, the language is still was still not there. I, I was able to speak English, but it was not there completely. Um, but yeah, so um, when I got there, I was learning a lot. I was learning, I was actually going through all this process of 3D modeling and I was actually like having fun. And what I was actually learning, this is actually some of the pictures I have from those times with my classmates too as well. We did a lot of green screen. We were actually doing some motion capture, you can see here on the side. Um, so we were actually learning and we were actually like doing so many things that were so much fun and I find that um, the day school actually start post uh, well they actually foster this culture of everyone here is has something in common you know you like films you like TV you have uh, TV shows you you enjoy playing games and you find these people like you get into the school you find all these people in the room and then you it's so easy to talk to everyone even though they are strangers so we start actually getting this uh, really good dynamics um, and I started experimenting too as well. So I have a little bit of experimentation here and there uh, with some of the exercises that we did. Um, we did some face replacement. I'm like, what if I do my face in a cat? Um, I think someone said, no one had tried on the day school, but go for it. <laughs> I'm like, sure, let me actually go and do it. So I actually did this. Uh, and what I was doing also the experimentation, um, this was actually pretty good. Um, my friends and uh, because of course we became really friends um this is actually my classroom um oh my gosh <laughs> this is actually so cool because everyone was there having fun what has enjoying it um we were having crazy ideas bouncing to each other it was so easy to um it was a safe environment and i think that's one of the things that moves the tape school different from other ones that it creates a safe environment for you to actually try things and be safe if you actually fail or they don't actually come like the way they should be. You can try again. They actually encourage you to try again and kind of like, what if, and they give you some suggestions, but it's never imposing you to actually, you need to do this. This is how it goes. No, it's never like that. It's always like, ah, oh, have you think about doing probably like color this way? Maybe they work. And then they actually help you out. It's so amazing. And while you're working and having fun and all this stuff, and your classmates get into that dynamic too as well. And it's fun. It's just so much fun. Um, I think it was even like people from other classes start joining us too as well. Um, no matter if they were block one, block two, block three. In some point, I kind of forget who was in starting the school, who was actually on the afternoon, on the morning class, because it feels that we were just one. It was not like, oh, you know more than me, and I'm kind of like the best of the best. No, it was never that attitude on the day of school. And the school always fostered that. Um, of course, we had <laughs> Anthony here. <laughs> we actually have John, uh, really good teachers helping us all the time to actually just go into all this craziness uh, ideas that we also get. Um, and of course, you start actually getting friends. You start um, making friends. Uh, I have a really good supporting uh, group of friends that were actually like understanding that I was not the best at speaking English. And we laugh because sometimes I say things that they were actually not pronounced right and they sound something different then they laugh and then help me out and correct me to say the right thing um, so th that was actually a really good learning experience too as well for me uh, and a lot of support it's kind of like you find a second family outside of home and of course um, as I mentioned before we have so many people from other classes um, they were actually from the class four well, I think they were in block four when I was in block three these guys were actually uh, the guys I was actually doing, doing teaching assistant for them um, 
so it was actually pretty cool and just having this environment really amazing. Um, so one of the things that when I was on the Dave school, I did a lot and I will suggest you if you're actually getting into the school or you are about thinking to do is consider doing um, volunteer. Volunteer work is kind of like one of the best ways to learn on the school. And I know you might probably think, oh, but I'm going to be learning new software and I'm going to have the assignments and I'm going to be doing all this kind of like academic things. But definitely the volunteer part is probably the best experience that you can actually have from the day school, besides obviously the learning part, uh, the teachers helping you and all the stuff. Volunteer is your hands on projects and things that actually going to have uh, kind of like a feeling of real life. Um, situation. So definitely volunteer a lot. Uh, when I was in the school, I did more than probably 10 student shootings. I was just, hey, guys, I'm actually here. Even when I was walking into the green screen and I see some um, people actually doing some green screens, they're like, hey, guys, do you need any help? Um, just ask them, um, not even program some of the stuff. So I got to help even just carry some light, carrying some sandbags, uh, carrying some equipment, uh, get going, getting get some water, coffee, lunch for someone. You will learn. You will learn because you will learn to actually how to communicate with people. You will learn how to um, get your hands into get the gear too as well. Um, I actually got the opportunity, one of the volunteers Fly, uh, times I was doing it, uh, Lee Stringer was there. <laughs> and uh, he actually asked us if we want to actually help to volunteer to go and help to Virginia to actually help him with a uh, short film that he was doing at the time. Uh, Lee Stringer had works in Star Wars, uh, the animated The Clone Wars. He had work in Fly Fly, Battlestar Galactica, and Angel. Uh, he was in others, of course. He was a VFX supervisor. And this was actually a really good experience too for me uh, because you learn what it feels to be on a real production and you get kind of like the feeling of like okay who is the cameraman where do i need to do you start learning the language too as well of how people communicate uh just by hearing it and it's not like oh yeah sometimes you will feel like i don't know what i'm doing i'm just sitting in this in this chair and just waiting for something to do but sometimes it's actually good to just hear and observe it's really good um i was actually helping a little bit with the makeup uh, system uh, making uh, making a, a makeup on the actors and some of the other uh, people that were actually helping out there, and of course I ended up getting my hands into lighting, into camera. Um, so it was actually pretty good learning from the real uh, from uh, actually pro that was actually there. And from this one, when I volunteered on this one, I met another guys that were in uh, Florida um, tech tech school or something like that. They were doing the film uh, shooting. Oh, I actually participate in the 40 hour film from uh, from Florida in June. And then I met these guys. Uh, these guys were actually helping uh, on the way few um, shooting. And they told me, hey, do you want to do supervision for our um, short film? And I'm like, sure. But the thing is that I was about to start to do the BFX uh, block. <laughs> so I didn't know how to do BFX, but I ended up taking it. And this is something because John Gress at the time, um, he was uh, the BFX tutor and we just barely started when this thing happened. And he says, sometimes guys, you need to actually take stuff that you don't feel comfortable with it. And you will turn around and you will bite your fingers like, geez, what did I just got into it? Um, because you don't have idea how to do it, but you will figure out as you go. One of my friends, Zach, um, he helped me out a lot with this because he was a, he already had learned BFX. He was one class ahead of me. So he was kind of like my system BFX supervisor. <laughs> uh, but in reality, he was a supervisor in this thing. Um, yeah, and I learned a lot. I learned how to do uh, outside shooting and I learned how to do inside shooting on the green screen and with the purpose of doing BFX later on. So that was actually really interesting. Um, and of course, um, a year went by so fast. I I didn't take breaks, I think. <laughs> I was there. I was one of the persons that pretty much on the morning, at eight in the morning, the class comes in, everyone see me and say hi. And then the next day at eight in the morning, I'm in the same spot with the same clothing, 
really bad actually but with the same clothing it's like have you left the school at least and I'm like no i have been working pretty much 24 hours here uh, because i was so passionate i was as i mentioned before um i was not the brightest and I'm not, i was not the talented either um my drawing skills were so bad and still my drawing skills are not that good but they have got better with the years um but yeah definitely i have never drawn anything i didn't know anything about 3d so i had to work extra hard to actually get to the level of everyone else in my class we have a really talented student too as well in my class uh, nathan he was just natural and everything that he did in modeling is like wow man uh so it kind of was actually an incentive too for me to actually like okay these guys are actually like way above me I, I need to actually get into that level and they were so um cool and also fostering to actually me getting into that level and of course this is uh my whole well it's not the whole class <laughs> as you might probably actually see uh when you get into the uh production some people kind of like disappear for some reason i don't know why um but the people that actually stay there and work we actually missing two that were actually pretty good also uh working here um they were there they were there always working and you will have still um when you are a student you will have a little bit of students that um they actually really passionate and that passion drives you too as well so i graduate on 2011 uh, in december 2011 and again the question pops up the year have passed and what I'm going to be doing next. So next I got offered to actually be a teacher assistant on the day of school and yay, I have my um, teacher really proud and showing off. And uh, this is actually from the class that I was actually helping to do teaching assistance. Um, so that was actually a good experience too as well. The, it gave me the opportunity to also expand on my demo reel and continue doing um, research and trying to actually uh, get a job and get in, into contact with the, co the community here. Um, I also help with the 2012, that's actually the same class. This is actually their graduation um, picture when they actually finished the, the, the project. So, and at this point it's like, okay, what is actually the next step to actually go? So and that's where I actually like the big jump into the industry. It's, it can be scary, guys. I'm not going to lie. You hear from any career, you hear people that's like, oh, I graduated and ended up working in a Starbucks. And you're like, is that going to be me? And you actually scared. It's understandable to be scared that you might not probably find a job. Um, so I was in that position. I was really scared that I have left my family, my friends, and everything that I knew. Uh, the year was amazing, and I had put a lot of effort, but I was still scared. So um, one day, Mike came to me. Uh, I was sitting down on the on the computer just working. I don't remember. It was actually on the uh, Star Wars droids. And I was doing some animation and he's like, hey, um, I got you actually an arrangement with an interview um, to actually go in interview at Stargate Studios. And I'm like, perfect, yes, yeah, sure, I, I will take it. So at the time I didn't know who Stargate Studios were. And it's like the interview was like two days later and I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm gonna finish this chat and I'm gonna do some research uh, because research is important before you go into interviews. Um, so I'm gonna do some research later on. And I'm like, okay. so." Two days pass. <laughs> I was actually getting quite crowded with the stuff that I was doing. And funny thing is that when I start actually doing research the night before, like I have the um, interview at nine in the morning, I think, and I start doing some research around probably midnight. And I find out who the, the company was. And it's like they start throwing titles like Heroes and Walking Dead and um, Grey's Anatomy. So they were actually not a small fish in the pond, you know, is there are actually like an established company, they have a, a lot of credits, they have a lot of offices around the world. Um, so I started getting really nervous. <laughs> and I'm like, geez, I'm just gonna be interviewing with them. Oh my God, I started getting really excited. And I didn't sleep that night. I, I was so excited, I was so um, overwhelmed with emotions that um, I didn't sleep with it. <laughs> uh, so in the morning, I, I show up to my uh, office and he actually set up uh, his Skype and everything. And I have the interview on his office. And that was actually, <laughs> I was so nervous, I think. Um, I was actually interviewed with uh, Reed Paul. Uh, Reed Paul is, uh, the, he was the vice president at the time um, of Stargate. And 
I was so nervous. I was, my hands were swaying and I was like, man. And yeah, when I, we started interview, he started asking me questions about my demo reel, about my experience. Um, and I have actually worked on two weeks on Monkey Shell. Uh, it's a company there in Florida from Jeff. So I worked two weeks there and I, I talked about my experience with uh, working with Jeff and the projects I did. So the interview finished and Mikey was in front of me. Um, and I'm like, they did good. And he's like, you did awesome. And I'm like, oh my God, okay, okay, okay. So I was really excited. I was really, really nervous. Um, but yeah, I got the job. Um, they pretty much reached to me on that Friday night. And yeah, I got the job and I ended up moving to Atlanta. Um, so I ended up meeting, uh, we were the first ones setting up the office there in Atlanta. So that was actually a big responsibility too at the same time. Uh, here's the team, the initial team from the Atlanta, Atlanta office. Um, we have um, Sean Tickman and Sean um, and myself, um, just the only ones on the office technically and the supervisor. It was actually an amazing. Uh, they were actually really uh, understandable that I was a recent graduate. So um, that I was really nervous and that I didn't want to mess it up. Literally, they I never say that, I never express that, but the way that they actually act and help me out, it was like really uh, helpful in understanding that I was really nervous. <laughs> so, with that, my career started. This is something that it was just a journey. Of course, um, I have learned more stuff as I start going through and all the stuff that I have done, the volunteer work and the extra stuff even before, like the acting classes, um, the programming that I did when I was doing my IT career. Um, that was actually helping. Even the doing the radio broadcasting also helped. So everything started coming together finally finally at uh, this point of my life and I was so happy of course um, some things sometimes get out of you don't actually see them uh, or you actually don't pay attention to them like my personal life is start getting a little bit way out of the window um, because I was really focused on building my career um, so and of course from there um, I got my nominations on 2014 and 2015. Uh, I got also the opportunity from the same company Stargate to go into Mexico City because of course uh, Spanish speaker, they were actually looking for someone that uh, it did know the pipeline inside of the company and help them out to set up a, an office in Mexico City. So I had the opportunity to first time travel to Mexico City, even though I'm from Mexico, I have never traveled to Mexico City. And I actually had the opportunity to meet this wonderful uh, work of artists too as well that I train and help them out and uh, set up the office there. I was supposed to be staying for two weeks just to actually train them and just give them the initial starting, but I ended up staying for four months. So really amazing work. Um, this also had led me to be part of an amazing community. I'm part of the Visual Effects Society at the moment. Uh, here in New Zealand chapter, I'm part of the Board of Managers. Uh, I'm also part of also the ACM CGRAF and also part of the Television Academy, active member uh, internally um, where I'm working as um, Mike mentioned, I'm actually working on the school. I'm part also of the Board of Studies. So I help to shape the programs too, as well as industry standards. So, but all this stuff, of course, I can actually go over and over how all this the experience inside of the company was, but, um, Pretty much the journey it starts from here. And I was not gonna be, this have not been possible if other people had not been helping me out. Um, I have such amazing t-shirts, guys. Um, I have my junk, that was my modeling t-shirt. Um, he was actually amazing, just being really patient for me, all my models all walkie because yeah, in my language, and he was so, so passionate and so patient with me. Um, of course, I have uh, Jason. I don't have a, a picture with Daniel, uh, Dan Smith. Um, he was actually an amazing teacher too as well. And Jason, they were my uh, block four instructors. William came around, um, he helped us out. Uh, so he, he helped me out a lot too with my IT stuff. I broke one of my drives and 
I remember picking up my drive in pieces and going downstairs to the IT office and like, Sam, please help me. And he was so amazing helping me out. Um, and of course, uh, we have John Grace and uh, Anthony, he was amazing too as well, helping me out. <laughs> and uh, Mike, even though Mike was not directly my teacher, he had also teach me a lot of stuff uh, and got me to help to get confident on getting the, into the careers. Um, so definitely, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm missing more people here of my teachers because they were not the only ones. Uh, I learned from other people too as well. Um, teacher assistants, I did have amazing teacher assistants, um, students that have graduated from the Dave School, come back, did a little bit of work there and helped me out too much with all the problems they have. Um, they were amazing. I, I will not be here either without them. I definitely uh, acknowledge that and how important the part that they have on um, being on the day school for assisting the teachers. Um, and of course, I have some support. Kevin Kushaver was our guest director. Uh, he has shown us too much too as well when we were actually working on the on the project for uh, the blog for uh, Richard. He was actually came around a couple of times and he always his feedback was so amazing. Um, Andrea, Andrea, she actually helped me out to get into the school. She was the admissions person at the time as well. Carla, I don't have a picture with Carla, but um, they were actually amazing um, helping me out to get through all the nitty gritty of the paperwork <laughs> because I was not too good on that. Um, so they definitely, and I'm pretty sure I'm missing a couple of people here, um, either because I don't have a picture or because the slides were have actually turned huge. Um, but yeah, definitely this is all the support. And of course I have my family and friends that were actually supporting my mom and my dad were really supported of my decision of actually of pursuing this career. I have some amazing friends that actually helped me out to get there to Orlando. Um, so definitely that was actually um, important. Um, but yeah, so this is actually kind of like the journey and some people think that it's just one person job, getting to point A to point B and look successful. But in reality, my success is not just mine. It's also all these people that have been around and helping me out and correct me when I was wrong, <laughs> help me when I was actually like just stuck and also kind of like cheer me out when I was on my low points too as well. Um, so some advice that I will actually go into it. If you actually considering going into this industry or you're about to start your, your course in, into this career. So some extra advice besides doing some volunteer, I will say just start doing some networking guys. Networking is, I think the Dave School is really good on fostering how to do networking. It gives you the tools to actually uh, go out and start talking to people and other artists to get your feedback. Um, so networking is going to be getting you places. And one of the things, and especially, of course, me now being a uh, teacher too as well, I have some students that come to me and it's like, oh, I'm so afraid to reach reach out to a certain person that is working on the industry. And I'm like, don't be. If you're actually really passionate about this industry and you really enjoy doing VFX animation video games and you admire that person because some people is like, oh, this is actually my hero. Um, it's actually good. Go and reach them out. Uh, try to communicate with them. Send them an email and say, hey, by the way, I really love your work. I, I say whatever you want to actually express because this actually helps us too as well, the people that have been on the industry, to see that we are making a change, that we actually inspire the new artists that are coming out. And we remember, we were on your shoes. It's no way that we couldn't have jumped from, oh, I had this idea of doing BFX in my case, right? BFX or video games and just be there doing it. Um, we have been through a process of being a students and we suffer the same way that you actually <laughs> suffer. It's kind of like a weird, really weird uh, choice of word, but it's kind of like you go through all this and we have been there too as well. So don't feel threatened or you don't feel like, oh, I'm not worth it of actually reaching this person. The community, the VFX show, visual effects community is really um, welcoming to junior artists or students that are actually going through their careers because we are still students after this day, even though we were working on the industry, we still learn, 
we still take classes, we still take courses. And that take me to the next uh, point. You're always gonna be upskilling, guys. Once that you actually go to the day school, it's not like, oh, I did the day school and they have actually teach me everything that I will know in the universe and I do not have anything else to learn. No, the upskill is going to happen and it's going to continue. It's going to be a continued thing during your career. The day school, what it does is that it helps you to actually learn how to actually upskill by yourself. It's not just, okay, here's the lesson, uh, just do the exercise, we're going to create this. It's not just that. It's going to help you out to actually learn how to research, how to also learn by yourself because they are actually uh, conscious that at the moment that you get into the industry, you will need the skills of learning by yourself. So they also foster that a lot. And here's me as a student, and I don't have a recent picture of me uh, working also as well, but um, here's me working on the final product, on the final project that we were doing, the production. Um, yeah, that, I was really happy that day. <laughs> but what I didn't know is this was, probably the very first time that I went up to close to four days with almost no sleep. That was actually not healthy. Of course, I know now, but I was so into working. And I think that it's not the first time that it happened. It happened a couple more times, even in the industry, that I had to actually take some overtime at work. And, but this is actually when it happens that you need to learn how to actually do some balance. And I will talk about that too as well. Um, so I like to show this as I show you my very first kind of like Photoshop weird stuff that I was doing. Um, this is actually my first work. Um, I wanted to do animation, of course, and this is my first work that I was wanted to feel proud about it. This, you work, you actually do your exercises, whatever the teacher give you, you actually do it because you know that it's actually gonna help you out to build to this point. And this is what I wanted to feel so proud. I spent so many days on this. And one day I came to the school <laughs> and this is where the mic story uh, starts. <laughs> I came to the school one day and I was feeling like I have something really solid. And I'm like, okay, let me go and show it to Mike. So I go to his office, I show him the file and he started giving me feedback. Uh, I have to say that I was probably three months and a half already on the course when this happens. So he started giving me feedback and his feedback was honest and it was really respectful and friendly. So he was not doing nothing wrong. He was doing feedback as he should, but because it was my first experience on getting that kind of feedback, it kind of destroys me. I swear, I remember it's kind of like really vivid and I walk off, uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I walk out of his office and on the his office was on the first floor. I don't know where he is now, but his office was on the first floor close to the reception. And there's a restroom there. So I turn to the restroom, get into the restroom and start crying. I cry so much <laughs> that day. And it's actually like, you realize like, oh, I have put so much in. Sometimes it can be dismotivated because you're like, you're so much up into kind of like, I feel that it was kind of like an ego thing from my part too as well. I was too much in my ego and feeling really proud about this. And I'm like, yes, I had done the best animation. I'm going to go and work on Pixar with this. I'm going to put it in my reel. And yeah, that actually was a reality checkpoint. And I'm really glad they happened. It's not like, I'm actually saying, no, it's bad. No, I'm really happy that, and glad that it happens. I'm really thankful for that too as well because this have helped me out to build the skin for the feedback. And when you go into the industry, guys, you will have people that will sometimes don't know how to talk. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, some people that is actually too much into egos. It's really weird that you actually find them out, but building the, the ability to uh, get the skin for feedback. Um, and kind of like find it out that this is not about you. It's not something personal about you. It's something that is for making you better. It's kind of makes it change a little bit on that um, idea of how, <clears throat> sorry, an idea of how to actually get feedback and it makes you grow. People, when you give, they give you feedback, they are wishing you the best. Um, 
but you also, when you're actually going to give feedback to someone, you need to be also aware of how things um, that people have been working. You don't want to sugarcoat it. Like, I really like how Mike said it because it was really sincere, it was really respectful, and it helped me out to grow. And you want to be that person that you give feedback that's respectful, is constructive, and it helps the person to be a better artist. So definitely destroy me. I woke up of the bathroom uh, and I went, I'm like, I cannot stay in the school. I have no sleep. I'm hungry. I'm destroyed. I feel so, so bad. I'm filled to the floor. And I was going upstairs and I uh, to pick up my stuff and I find one of the teacher assistants and on the stairs and he's like, what happened? Because I have my eyes really puffy and red and I'm like, I start crying again. <laughs> I'm like, might just destroy my thing, my animation. He doesn't like me. And it's like, I start actually like just ranting about it. And of course, at that time, I was not seeing what is it, what's going on. And the teacher assistant told me like, look, um, it was actually Tito. Um, he actually told me like, look, he actually didn't mean to actually destroy your animation. He's actually helping you. <laughs> and I'm like, no, but it didn't seem he was so cruel. And like, what did he say? And I told him exactly what he said. It's like, uh, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> that's actually quite nice. <laughs> I'm like, oh. So I went home and I just started reflecting about um, what um, Mike has said and the teacher assistant has said. And a uh, couple, two, it took me probably like a day. The next day I came back and I'm like, I was quite quiet that day. Um, just still thinking, trying to recover and just reflecting what happened. And it was a really good experience, definitely. Uh, quite painful. Um, but it was a good experience to grow. So um, one of the things that oops, one of the things that I have learned oops, is that the hard the harder you work, the better you get. So that was actually part of that same experience because even though that I was actually working really hard, it was my first time. I was not natural. I need to actually build on those skills and uh, I need to work harder. Definitely. And so I continue working harder. Uh, I think later on, I find out we end up moving into the block three, the BFX compositing. And I find a really good love of actually just doing compositing that I stopped doing the animation uh, for a while. And I just continued doing compositing and just got really, really into it. And the majority of the time I was just doing compositing, compositing, compositing. So yeah, um, definitely work hard. It's not easy, guys. Um, if this was something easy, everyone will be doing it. Literally, you will have everyone on the world doing the same thing. And the reason that we don't have that many artists is because people is realize how difficult it is. It's hard work, not because it's art, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be easy, okay? So, but once that you see the results and you see you work also for example, for myself being broadcast on a TV in a TV um, show and seeing all these people getting excited and seeing the stuff and like reacting to it, you as an artist take quite a pride and you don't realize how how good stuff happen. Um, I kind of like go also to sometimes feeling like a little bit of imposter. Some people might probably already have here the term of the imposter syndrome. <laughs> Uh, I go sometimes through that because it's like, oh my God, what is, uh, I feel that I'm, even though I work hard and I have been doing this, I know I'm doing this. I still feel that they will find out that it's not me because it's so good. Um, so it's kind of like, it just get overwhelming sometimes. So that you have to learn to deal with that too as well with the imposter syndrome because we are so straight and so um, critical as an artist that we want perfection we do really create perfection as an artist. And it's something that it doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist, but what you can do and say, okay, I have a sheet perfection is when you actually have done your work and you have learned something from it. No matter what, I think that's probably the closest thing that we can have as a perfection. No matter if you fail in your work, you will fail a lot. And this is, take it from me. I have felt a lot on, doing things because I didn't know how to do them. Um, I have felt a lot into doing some exercises or even in the industry, some um, projects that I have to actually be honest and say, hey, man, I think I'm not gonna be meeting the deadline. And that sometimes you take it as a failure because you're like, I'm not 
put in the time or I'm not putting the effort, but sometimes the task is way beyond your, your control and deadlines are coming and you have a project to respond and a client and of course a multi-million cl client. Um, so you don't want to actually burn yourself to as well. So in talking about burning yourself, um, balance. Balance is really important for your life. Balance to get healthy, eating healthy, um, balance your personal relationships, your professional. As I talked before, uh, when I was doing my career and focusing on my career, I was quite immature probably in that aspect. And some of my relationships went really bad. And that's actually something that I didn't know how to balance. So uh, once I start getting older, of course, um, I start learning how to balance, but I wish I would have done it earlier in the sense of not affecting my health. Um, I got kind of distance from my mother and my family too as well uh, on that time. So it's not healthy not having your loved ones uh, close to you definitely, but also it's not even, it's even less healthy if you actually don't talk to them. So do exercise, uh, as <laughs> Tony, Tony mentioned it earlier. I, actually do a lot of out, outside activities. I have not done it here now since we got to New Zealand uh, because there's no activities here, unfortunately, for that. Um, but yeah, definitely um, do activities outside, sitting all day on the computer, even though that I would love to do that. Sometimes I feel so drained that I cannot even see the screen anymore. So when you start feeling that, uh, you start feeling burnout. Burnout is not good. I literally even, I'm not working in the industry. I just got through a burnout too as well. Um, burnout is something that you will experience at some point on your career. And it's actually learning to co cope on how to get your balance. Um, the industry sometimes doesn't make it so easy to actually kind of like, it, they make it intuitive. Let me actually rephrase that. It doesn't make it intuitive of how to balance it. So you have to be creative and observe when you actually see that your personal life is going great, uh, bad or your professional life is going bad, stop and think about how you can balance. Because if you don't balance, your health gets affected, as it had been to me, as I mentioned before, got in Guillain Barre, it was actually kind of like the stress. Um, getting burnouts is actually part of that you are not balancing correctly. So make sure that you balance. And I think William was one of the first ones that bring up that to my to me to teach me that you need to actually know because if you don't have health guys you don't have nothing you cannot sit down on your chair and work because you're unhealthy you're just probably thinking just to lay down and just not do nothing else so take care of your health definitely um so and of course a lot of you might probably have been going through stress um lately uh because of course the whole situation that's going on the crisis the pandemic um one of the things that i feel there's a constant uh question on the head of the minds especially for my students and other people in the industry even friends who they are working on the industry for years they even ask themselves like um what is this situation is going to take the industry now from now on so it's kind of like how is the future what is the future hold for us as a bfx uh gaming uh digital design entertainment uh industry so my response and my feeling this is my personal feeling is that we are actually in the best one of the best industries that we can actually get because now companies have actually realized that they can do a lot of remote work so they actually have to test it. They, what they kind of like being forced to test it to a certain degree. And that means that you don't necessarily probably in a two or three years period, you're not necessarily going to need to go and work on move your whole life into another city. You can actually work from where you at uh, in a probably in a big studio. Um, companies are starting to realize that. And since we are not an industry that uh, we can create the stuff, we actually storytellers at the end of the day. We can create stuff. We don't depend about um, here, for example, in New Zealand, the tourist sector has been quite hit uh, because they depend on tourists coming in. Um, our industry actually doesn't depend too much about that. We depend on our own cre creativity and ingenuity to actually do things. Um, so, and if the whole community of the BFX is really supported now, right now, especially right now, um, 
there have been a little bit more united to actually help people that have run out of work. Uh, we give a hand to people that we know, and maybe that person knows someone else that they actually recommend, and we actually help them out too as well. I have been involved in that too um, aspect, and that's actually pretty good. We help each other. It's a really caring and fostering industry for the artists, the artists caring about artists, definitely. So I think that will be for me. Um, so, and I will probably open it <laughs> for a question. I feel that I have talked too much and a lot. <laughs> so um, yeah, I will probably open it for questions at this point. So first off, Dylan, um, yes. this is my first time hearing that story. <laughs> I didn't know I made you cry. I, I feel a little bit bad about it, but uh, um, I know I was honest to think it's not the first time I know I've made somebody cry um, <laughs> several times because, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to waste your time or my time by telling you it looks great if an employer is going to look at it and go, no, this does not look great. Why did you send this to me? So the things that I give are honest, but they're they're not usually sugar-coated. <laughs> and I think that's the way to go, though. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, it's better to have it because once I got into the industry, you realize that that's the way to go. Um, that's And even people can get really mean on, you know, they don't know how to talk to other people. And they kind of come straight ahead and say, um, sorry for the vocabulary, but this is going to say this is bullshit. And you're like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> so the way that you say it was really honest, and it helps the students to actually progress, to actually open their eyes, even though they hurt. It will hurt because you're kind of like your pride gets hurt <laughs> to a certain degree. But it's good. I will say don't stop doing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me and people cry, but it's a good cry. It's a learning cry. <laughs> So before before we go into the Q and A part, I, I have a little Dylan story for you guys, <laughs> and she probably knows what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, <laughs> as the as the career services director at the school, one of the things that uh, I help the students do, I'm going to turn my camera on for this, just because you know I, I love this little story and it, it means a lot to me, and I've I've told it several times. Do you know what I'm going to say? Not really. I'm actually yeah. like, what is going to say? So one of the things that I do as the career services director at the day school is I try as much as possible to help prepare our students for the eventuality of getting a job interview. So Dylan relayed the story of uh, uh, one of her first real job interviews actually happened in my office via a format like this, via remote, via Skype. Um, but one of the things that I do is I put students through a mock interview process. And I ask them questions. I tell them, this is, the, this is the studio I've assigned for you. You need to research it. And I go in and I, I ask them questions about their resume. And, and uh, some of the questions I would ask, I've changed throughout the years. And I don't ask this question anymore. But, you know, I, will, I would have uh, at the time been asking people what their greatest strength was and what their greatest weakness was. And I'll never forget what you said when I asked about what your greatest weakness oh, was. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you remember that one now? <laughs> yeah. She told me, just, she looked dead in my eyes. She goes, butterflies. I'm like, <laughs> what? How is butterflies this <laughs> for you? And and you went on to describe, oh, they're horrible, they're ugly, they're gross, and you just hated butterflies. And it just pulled me out of the job interview. <laughs> and I started laughing, and we had a little moment that we connected, you know. And... Uh, um, here's this girl who's afraid of butterflies, but she has no problem lopping heads off of zombies on the walk of the dead. So I just yeah. thought that was funny. That's funny because I take that question quite literally. Um, I think it was kind of like one of those things that, of course, the learning process. Um, and I was going to be, I was being quite honest at that point. It's like, yeah, I'm not actually thinking about getting the job. You're asking me personal stuff. So I'm going to tell you something personal for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it was the very first thing think, because I was not, I think I was not prepared for that question. And it was the first thing they popped up in my head. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to tell them. <laughs> it's just 
honestly butterflies. <laughs> and then if you remember, we got you um, for your going away party, we got you a gift and we put it in a bag that had butterflies all over it. <laughs> Yeah, that was actually, <laughs> yeah, and I think it was also like a small uh, cutoff too as well. And Sai, they has kind of like a thank you, good luck. And I'm like, oh no, I was not able to touch the bag, I think. I, I think I asked someone else to just pull it out for me. <laughs> All right, but I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open it up. Uh, I'm going to turn my camera off. Uh, we're going to open it up for any questions anybody has uh, for Dylan. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type it into the little chat. Uh, in the public chat, and uh, uh, Dylan, I'm sure you can see that. Um, yeah, so, yeah, she's not seeing it. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions, um, please uh, go ahead and fire away. Dylan, it's so good to see you again. I hope you're hey, doing fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, though. Oh, it's good to hear you too, as well. It's been a long time. It has. And, but you've been doing great. Everything that, that I've seen is just success. So you've been climbing a ladder and you haven't gotten to the top yet. That's awesome. <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting there. I think um, one of the things that you guys teach me, and definitely I appreciate your patience because sometimes I try to explain my problems. So like the software is not working and I didn't know how to explain. You were so patient too as well with me. I really, really appreciate your patience. Um, but yeah, definitely as a, an artist, um, one of the things that you, you guys will find out is never enough. We are quite critical to ourselves. We always want to improve. We always want to do better. And definitely it's getting there. It, it not, I don't think it's gonna never reach that goal of being like perfection, as I said, no one will be perfect, but it's just improving. And definitely thank you to be there, my teacher. <laughs> It was my pleasure. If everybody had your drive, it would be a much better world. <laughs> Thanks. So Dylan, okay, so you've, got a, you've got a question from Shay Pluta. Yeah, I'm actually, um, thank you so much for telling us all about your experiences and give us advice. Can you recommend any place we can volunteer at in the industry as a high schooler? Um, I think probably as a high schooler is not sure in Orlando. Um, I know here is, exist some programs that you can actually go and help to just do some work on the side. But don't if the volunteer uh, options don't come to you, I would say probably go and do what I did with my friends. Just go and take pictures, video. You guys have amazing cameras nowadays. On so my time, the cameras were quite bad on the phones. Um, so take the camera out of your phone and just tell your friends, hey, let's just imagine that you're running away from explosion and just make, if you want to make it a beam, have fun about it too as well. Not necessarily uh, as a high schooler, probably the best options that I will suggest might be probably your, if your school have some kind of like local broadcasting um, environment where you can actually go and practice probably some, let's say they have some advertising to do, uh, offer yourself to say, I can do some Photoshop. So offer yourself to do that. Uh, if you have some, uh, let's say you have a presentation coming up, even yourself, you can do your presentation, say, okay, I'm gonna learn how to do a like explainer animation and see how it goes. So. And you show that and you can probably like get the teachers to actually give you some ideas because one of the things is you need to speak that you want to do this to your teachers. I feel that they are probably the best guides to help you out to say, hey, you know what? I have here about this company. I have here about this community uh, program or I have here about um, this group that's actually doing some work uh, to help. Um, so they will actually redirect you to that. So, yeah. I think probably that's a, uh, what I would respond to Shay. Hopefully I actually say it right. <laughs> okay, and that's uh, another question for Shay. I'm gonna get into Victor uh, Veronica in a minute. Um, thank you so much. Maybe I will ask when you interview people from jobs in the industry, what do you look for? I think one of, uh, I think my will be actually really good on this one too as well, uh, have it as a support. But for when we actually did interviews when I was on um, Mexico City and even here when we actually like, I do actually run some mock-up interviews with my students, um, having information from people from the industry that what they're looking is a combination of hard skills and soft skills. Uh, what does that mean is that your hard skills can be okay, like for example, your Photoshop work, uh, your compositing work, 
uh, animation modeling, they can be okay, but they understand that you are actually a student and you are probably like still working through the process of learning new skills and new tools. Um, but one of the things that they actually been putting a lot of emphasis lately, especially, is that you know how to communicate. It's like little, if you're actually having some problem, that you speak up and say, hey, I got this task that said that you got an exercise, right? And you're walking through your exercise and you're saying, okay, um, the wording of the exercise, I don't quite understand it. You are actually thinking, and I'm not sure how to approach it. So that's actually a problem. If you stick with that and you don't say, can you explain further to the person that give you the task or someone next to you? That's going to be a problem because companies look for the communi the fluent communication between the teams and time is money literally on the industry as you guys have here probably figures about how many money how much uh, benches have done or lord of the rings or any other big blockbuster or video games that you have probably speak they big big money and if you actually divide that money that whatever the initial investment was and place it into time you will see how much each second that you delay to actually say that you're having a problem will cost the company. So definitely communication is really, really important. Um, so the other thing that we actually looking is that they are willing to be open for any feedback. They don't take the feedback aggressive or they don't take it as you actually attacking them. Because some of the students and even students I have seen now, they actually, you give them the feedback and they're like, get quite angry at you and it's like and they actually react and they're like you're attacking me i'm like no you, i just tell you to change the color it's a suggestion to change the color because of these reasons but if you don't want to change it you don't have to um so they actually react quite negative uh that's probably one of the things that you don't want to have because that person will make the team toxic to the long run um so you don't want to have someone that's kind of like close-minded to feedback um and to give feedback to as well so you are expected to give and receive feedback as well when you're working on the industry. So um, Veronica, thank you so much for doing this. We have a lot of students here that are getting ready for to enter to the BFX program. What is the best advice you can give them to prepare them for their education that they be ready to work? <laughs> be really passionate about this, guys. Um, I think one of the things that I will always feel that students have to be passionate about what you're doing. That will make your life easier. That will make your classmates' life easier. And that will make the teachers easier. <laughs> that you're actually passionate, that you're actually trying, trying to work. Um, be open-minded to that aspect too as well. Um, and don't be shy. Don't be shy. Uh, I feel that sometimes it can be overwhelming when you get to a new school and you feel that everyone is like the rock star and you are kind of like the little dog on the corner, just kind of like shaking. Uh, I have been there, especially remember, I, I didn't know English at the time. So I did actually have some shyness on me when I started the first the very first day. And um, definitely just be open, be, be, everyone is so friendly. Talk about video games, try, talk about uh, film, TV shows, because that's actually how you, you will find out that you are in a group that without realizing everyone is in the same thing that you actually are. Um, so yeah, definitely I will say just be open-minded and, and talk, talk to everyone, um, build that communication definitely. And don't be shy. I mean, it's quite tricky to say it, <laughs> um, especially if you're naturally shy like me. Uh, but don't be shy. You, definitely you will find out some friends and some people that will understand you on the school and will accept you. Um, hey, Dylan. It's John Gray. Yeah. Hey, hey John. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna oh, actually, my God. I'm going to actually turn my camera on for a second here. As it's so good to hear some voices, definitely. Some familiar voices. <laughs> everybody has said it's great to see you. And there's one thing that you sort of left out, um, and I want to I want to address it because it's really important. The thing she left out is there's a piece that's you. A big piece of this is you. And one of the things that I think across the board, everybody, if somebody said to me, 
name a student who just had the best attitude, who whenever you saw just had a smile on their face, it was just, no matter how hard things got, just put forth 100%, it would be Dylan. I think that would be, without, without, without question, one of the top students across the board in that. And, and what she's saying is everything she said was 100% spot on. Everything she said was 100% accurate. It's a lot of this, uh, you know, she talked about the struggles with failure. One of the things I wanted to add with that was there is no time where you're at the top of your game, where you're doing amazing, where everything goes perfectly, that you're actually learning something. That just means you've already learned it. So you have to sort of learn to uh, – I, I, I got a tear to my eye when you brought up the story that I told of – uh, I, I used to teach, as I, I still tell this in the orientation classes, that time where you take on a job, you take on an assignment, you go, yeah, I can do it. And then when you leave, you're like, oh. Yeah, exactly. I remember that just so that you turn around. Yeah. <laughs> and I do that so that it kind of sinks in and sets in because it's super important that everybody learns that you have to learn to get comfortable with not knowing. You have to learn to get comfortable with that figuring it out process with that trouble, you know, the, the problem solving process. But anyway, it's great to see you. Great presentation. I'm going to let, I'm going to turn it off and let you get, get back to it. I just wanted to say hello to you. Oh, no, thank you, though. It's amazing to see you too as well. <laughs> so yes, uh, John was saying definitely is, uh, is nerve breaking, definitely. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer now that if you don't actually expand to your uh, getting out of your comfort zone. You're never going to grow. You're always going to be stuck on the same circle. You're only going to be stuck in the same circle. And people that get stuck in the same circle, they don't do more. So get comfortable to be uncomfortable, literally. Um, learning is difficult, yes. Uh, fail, failure sometimes can be also difficult. You sometimes expect, oh, yeah, I'm probably going to fail this because I've been missing this thing and this thing. And sometimes it's a surprise. You're like, how did it happen? I did everything, and I was really sure that it was going to pass or it was going to look good. Um, failure is is a whole thing that we actually need to get used to. And failure doesn't mean that you are less. Uh, it means that you thought you did know something or that you didn't know something. And it's going to realize you that you actually need to grow in that aspect. So definitely, um, you as a passion that you bring into the table, that's going to be really important when you get into the school, definitely. Um, a lot of the school, uh, yeah, a lot of the sc high schools have morning news broadcasts with green screens, like Mike uh, suggested. That's definitely something that I have seen here in New Zealand. Some of the schools have offered kind of like uh, workshops to actually get uh, people to go and kind of like learn about broadcasting and kind of like do a little bit of work here and there. So you can probably get involved into that too as well. Um, she smiled even when she cried. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's true actually. When uh, My now husband, the first time that he actually hear me uh, laughing really loud, like a, like a burst of laugh, it sounds like I was crying. <laughs> Let you okay, so that's actually one of those things. Yeah. Um, question: uh, You have talked about how important it is to continue increase your skill sets. Are there any skills that are not taught at the Dave School that you will recommend trying to work on that are important in the industry? Um, I'm not sure. I think probably the basic skills have been teach on Dave School. That's what we were uh, we were discussing early, Mike and I. I think the basic uh, stuff is actually described in uh, in the Dave School. I think they do a really good job on packing what is really really essential that you will need on the industry in just one year. They do that. They review the program. Uh, I think every single year to just actually see what else they can be improved and what else is the industry trends. So they're really on top of the game on the Dave School. In on the side, if you feel that probably some theory. Uh, I remember we didn't have too much theory or drawing classes. We have actually on the Saturdays like optional drawing groups. Uh, when I was in the school, that you can actually do in some figure drawing. That's actually a good practice to have, that good skill. Um, you can probably do some um, theory of how to edit, because I feel that we actually touched on to editing, but it was not too much. And especially when you're doing your show reel, you will need to actually know how to sell your reel, how to sell yourself as an artist. Um, that's also something that you can actually start expanding. Um, but they, yeah, definitely, that's actually skills that is extra good to have, definitely. 
it's kind of like a extra points acting if you actually decide to go into animation like I did, acting is good. Programming, if you're actually gonna be doing uh, video games, programming, uh, especially C++ and Python are kind of like two of the languages that we use a lot. So programming is actually really good if you actually start going more into it. I'm not sure if you guys do more programming now, but I'm guessing for the game might be probably included already. Mm, so that's actually what I will suggest for uh, if you actually want to do side classes besides the day school. Like you do your course and say in the day school and then you do extra. I cover a little bit of, of blueprint, which is C plus plus based. Yeah. You know, I'm so a that's, that's nerd, good. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, that's good, definitely, because it's kind of like uh, I feel that if you actually go into the gaming industry, definitely it's kind of like a basic thing. And um, but it's also good that you actually do it on the side, guys. If you, I will say research about what. People are saying there's a lot of interviews out there that you can actually read. I have one friend here that works on um, Weta. He's a supervisor. He was a supervisor for Tintin. And he's actually starting a blog that it actually helps uh, people that's coming into the industry to know exactly what the industry is. It's kind of like inspiring. Uh, his name is Daniel Tossi. I can send the information to Mike so he can actually like just um, distributed. He's pretty good. He does interviews with people that's actually working in Weta, people who have working in uh, ILM and Framestorm. For those that don't know uh, those names, they're actually big names on the industry. Weta is pretty much like the Lord of the Rings <laughs> uh, company and Avatar, and then you have ILM. ILM is pretty much the founding father, if you want to call it from this industry, where they actually did Star Wars. Uh, Framestorm, they have done a couple things. I think they have actually uh, done a lot of the Harry Potter uh, stuff. So definitely there are big names. So there are big companies and big people that's actually there. Um, yeah, and the slave school have actually grads everywhere. Um, that's actually a funny thing because um, when I got into the Emmys <laughs> the first time, this is a small story, I got into the Emmys and I remember it was gonna be Kurt. Uh, Kurt was actually a graduate like a three years older graduate. Uh, he graduated three years before I graduated. And I didn't meet him in real life, but I remember someone was actually telling me, I think it was William. It was like, yeah, Kirk, he's actually the king of rigging. He's really good at rigging. Yeah, Kirk Smith, yeah. And everyone was actually like just giving him such a big props. And I always wanted to, I was interested in rigging um, at the time. and. I went and actually, I look on the list on the Emmys because they give you kind of like a list of the guests and where the table they are actually located when you go into these events and they put it in the middle. So if you want to go and network while you're actually partying, uh, you can actually go and actually talk to people. And I went and actually talked to him. It's like, I know you don't know me, but I know you really well. And he's like, whoa. Uh, uh, how do you know me? And I started talking to him like, oh, so you're from the school. And then it's like, yes, the conversation started. And he presented me to other people that he actually works. And then, yeah, that actually start, yeah, really, really good networking there. And uh, you never imagine how many people actually hear your name. I did have that situation too as well. I was in LA and I was seeing some of my ex-classmates and they just come into it. Some person, random person came to me and like, you're Dylan Velasquez, right? And I'm like, what? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I actually know so-and-so from the Dave school. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. So I know, <laughs> no, he's not <laughs> like a crazy person, <laughs> random. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's actually pretty much uh, what I will say. Uh, be comfortable in actually looking for this information. Um, so question for Katherine, how would you suggest ways to find volunteer work to gain more experience? It is by connecting to people through LinkedIn or looking through various websites? I think it's a combination of both and even more. Um, as I mentioned before, sometimes when you volunteer, let's say to one geek, um, you go and volunteer and you meet people there and that people will give you another volunteer work. And that same people will recommend you with someone. That, that's what happened when I went with Lee Stringer. Uh, well, I was working in one, I was volunteering one of the small projects inside of the school and Lee Stringer came in and asked us and then we went into With You and then from With You, I actually met two more people. They gave me two more volunteer geeks. So um, that was actually good. 
uh, as a student or probably like if you are in high school or you're about to start uh, or thinking to start it, I feel that um, you can probably find also volunteer besides linking and doing uh, going face to face. You can probably go to networking events. Um, this is actually been it feels weird when you go the first time for networking events. I will not lie because I'm actually quite more introvert. And as I mentioned, I'm quite shy too as well. I have learned a little bit more over the years on how to be more speaking to people, you know. Uh, but it feels weird when you go to networking events because you don't know what to talk about it. And it's so many people, it looks like they have been friends for so many years are talking and talking and you're like, how do I break into the conversation? Um, so one of the tips that I can give you uh, if you're going to networking events is just get closer to the people that you might probably get talking. It will sound weird, but just hear to the conversations that you they're actually having. You might probably hear something like, oh yeah, maybe they're, Again, playing video games, they would just watch a TV show, their film, they're talking about topic that you maybe do skateboarding, maybe you do painting, you do basketball, whatever you do, and then you will hear them probably talking about that. That's a good opportunity for you to jump in. I'm not saying like, hey, how's it going? Let's talk about basketball. Um, no, I started like walking you. Well, oh, yeah, I have heard about that match. It was terrible, right? I'm sorry, I overhear your conversation. But uh, so you start talking about that and people will actually get excited. Oh, it's another person that's a fan of uh, whoever player you want to insert here or video games. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so that, that, that would be my suggestion, Katherine. Uh, curse me, yeah. Okay, so Kristen Woods. Um, what was the most memorable experience while attending the Dave School? Oh my gosh, I have so many. <laughs> um, we did. Uh, at the time, it was a T-shirt called Dave. Everyone thought that the Dave School was named because of him, uh, especially people that were coming in. <laughs> Um, so they was, yeah, everyone thinking like, oh, so the school was named up uh, after you and like, no, 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 no. Um, so he was actually, he it was memorable because he was one of the teachers that he actually really make us feel like we need to still learn more. Um, not saying that anyone else didn't, but it was one of the first teachers. Um, he was blocked too, I think. And he did actually mention when someone, I think one of my classmates, I'm not remember well, they went and asked him about why he kept give them a B on the grading, on the exercise. And he actually came out like, guys, I will never give you an A. Literally, like he stayed in front of us and he said that to us. And I'm like, wait, I work really hard for my A's. And he's <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. so true. Yeah, sorry, it is I'm like sorry, but yeah, she's no. totally telling the truth. <laughs> so it's like um he actually stayed there and he was quite serious too as well. Like he always was, was serious. And, and then he actually gave us a reason. He's like, if I give you an A, guys, you should not be here. You should be working on the industry. And he tells us that like really blank and really dry. And I'm shrinking on my chair. And even though it doesn't sound like, kind of like a, some people will think, oh, that's probably a horrible experience. It was a also changing experience. So that's why it's probably one of my memorable uh, experience besides I have so many and I think I won't have the time to actually recall all of them. Um, but yeah, that was actually one of the changing experience. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? He's right. It makes some logic that we will be actually working in the industry. What am I doing here? <laughs> I should be working and finding a job. So yeah, it was actually good. Um, he was way nicer to you than he was to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, me because he was your t-shirt too. <laughs> yeah, he pulls me into the office and he goes, hey, get the, come in the office. I was like, uh-oh, what have I done? And so I go in there, he goes, shut the door. I'm like, oh God, I'm dead. And I close the door and he goes, sit down. So I sit down and he goes, look, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. You should have an A. And I went, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> I should have an A. And he goes, no, no, no. What I'm telling you is you should have an A, but I'm not going to give you one because <laughs> I don't give A's. Now get out of here and tell Ryan to come in here. 
<laughs> yeah, it was actually. Oh, it kind of feels so, a little bit like military style. Yeah, except unlike you, I went home and cried into my pillow. So <laughs> I, I sobbed into my pillow. All right, I'll, I'll straight up admit it. Yeah, that's actually funny. Uh, I mean, yeah. We have to start kind of wrapping it up. I know the admissions people uh, wanted to jump in real quick before we let everybody go. So yeah. uh, this is your opportunity to go ahead and jump in there. Uh, Anthony or Veronica, if you got something you want to uh, add in real quick. Yeah, actually, I, I do. I mean, I, I know it's a lot to unpack because she's given you just an incredible volume of advice, right? Like she has laid it out for you, okay? But the, one of the best things she's, I agree with, I mean, she, I agree with everything, but when I think of a, a hidden nugget is the meme thing. When you said, look, just try it, just do it. Just try something. Just try to put together, take your phone out, take a picture, tell someone to run, pretend like an explosion, make a meme. Because then you're doing it without the whole burden of like, it's got to be perfect because it's a meme. Memes don't have to be perfect. Like, in fact, you, sometimes you don't want them to be perfect. You want them to be kind of cheesy. So uh, I think that's a really, really good advice because it just starts you on the process now, right now. By the way, great advice. And by the way, I, I, the butterfly story, I found that out the hard way. I took a beautiful picture of a blue monarch. Oh, and yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know at all. So I come in and I look at She's trying to do this cat track thing uh the cat the cat face track from hades um <laughs> that thing was i was like you sure you want to do that anyway um so i said dylan check this out and i'm thinking like it's a beautiful blue butterfly it's awesome right and dylan crawls out of her skin like on the chair <laughs> both feet like freak out full on oh i was like what people everywhere is going no don't show her butterfly <laughs> Yeah, I think at that time everyone in the class uh, knew already. Uh, when we got to you, you were in uh, Block 3 TA for us. And uh, everyone knew already that I was terrified by Butterfly. I'm still actually, by the way, still to this day, has not gone away. Uh, but yeah, everyone knew. And then by the time they like, yeah, they realized, okay, Tony, Tony, <laughs> you have done. <laughs> yeah, so, that's actually Bronca or Veronica. <laughs> is who I meant. Uh, I, I was inviting them to jump in. No, I just I from from the admissions team. I want you to. I wanted just to thank you, Dylan, for um, uh, for speaking today. And I think you said a lot of informative things for our guests here. Um, so I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to speak with us today. Yeah, no worries. It's a pleasure. As I mentioned before, um, remember seeing this kind of like conversation happening when I was a student and they were really helpful definitely really really helpful so it's a pleasure coming back as a as a guest too as well anytime just ask me <laughs> thank you so much Dylan I hope everybody got as much enjoyment out of this as we did seeing you again um, so uh, thank you all for showing up thank you Dylan for your time um, that's all we got See you guys. Bye, everybody. Day, Take care. Bye. Take care, Bye, you guys. Dylan. Thank you. <laughs>